Hello, my name is Jagmohan Singh Chavla and I'm a product manager with SAP Cloud ALM. In this video, I wanted to do a deep dive for task management. And this is going to be a long video. So again, as mentioned in the previous videos, just grab your coffee cup, be settled and dive in. You don't have to watch the entire video. You can always skip to the section of your choice. So there will be timestamps in the description of the video that will make it very easy. So let's jump right in. So I'm logged on to SAP Cloud LM and I'm in my task list. So let's go through this task list. Let's go through task capabilities, functions, features, filter options, everything in this one video. And let's start from the start. What is this? This is a view for your task list. As we add more and more attributes in the filter as well as in the results, it can become overwhelming. Especially if you are an end user, you may not want all these things at the same time. So the easiest thing for you is to adapt these filter settings and these column settings and even play with the order in which you want to see this information and then save it as a view. You can then even set it as a default view and then the system will remember and when you open the application next time then it will be very easy for you. You can do one step further. You can actually share this view as a tile on your Fury Launchpad. That way with a single click you get to the settings of your choice. Okay, so let's get into the attributes of the tasks and let's start with task sources. There are some initial tasks that are provided to you as soon as you create a project, even before you select a template. And these are called the setup tasks. But majority of the tasks are provided by SAP Activate methodology. And it has been proven that the project risk is significantly reduced when you select an SAP Activate template at the time of project creation. And you can easily identify all those tasks by using this source filter. You can create as many tasks as you want manually or via Excel upload. If you create them manually or via Excel upload, then the source is manually created. What are the tasks that come via scoping? When you add a scope, then each scope helps you identify a set of tasks that are relevant for managing that scope. So let's look at an example. So I have reduced my selection to a particular scope and my source is scoping. So when I created my plant Berlin scope, then system tells me that I should schedule fit to standard workshops for this scope. I should review requirements. I should define some test cases. And this appears automatically and it multiplies by the number of scopes you have. Let's talk about SAP readiness check. SAP readiness check is a tool that helps you in your conversion from a traditional ECC to SAP s or SAP s Private Cloud Edition very easily. The advantage is the readiness check already gives you a format compliant to SAP Cloud LM. So if you go to your readiness check, please look for that option to download the results from the readiness check in a format that SAP Cloud LM understands. Once you download the Excel sheet, you can upload it here and those tasks are provided with this dedicated source. You can also connect SAP Cloud LM to SAP Central Business Configuration easily. Once you do that, then project activities from SAP Central Business Configuration appear in SAP Cloud LM. The point to note is you cannot edit the status of those project activities. Here, Cloud LM plays a read-only role for good reasons because actually SAP Central Business Configuration owns the status of those project activities and they appear as tasks in SAP Cloud LM. And now let's look at task types. Task types tell you how a task behaves and what kind of options are available for that kind of task. So the first one is template task. Actually, you can think template tasks more as tasks coming from roadmap or roadmap tasks. The idea is these tasks come from a methodology and we do not allow the description of those tasks to be edited. That's the main difference. The project task is the one which you create manually. And here you can freely edit the description. 
Also, when it comes to dependencies, then we do not allow you to change the relationships of those template tasks or roadmap tasks because that is coming from the roadmap itself. But for project tasks, you can freely change the dependencies or relationships because it's your own created content. User story and project tasks are similar from a technical perspective, but they have a completely different functional purpose. We recommend you use project tasks more for coordination or alignment or to track things that have to be done. But user stories have far more functional aspect. In fact, in the requirement to deploy processing, we actually recommend that you start with requirements, break them into smaller units called user stories, give them story points, put them into a sprint, and adopt agile methodology with the agile mindset. So that's why a clear separation by type itself helps you focus on what kind of information is in what kind of task type. Subtask is just a child element of a project task or a user story. Requirement, though technically a task type, has a complete different functional purpose. A requirement is meant mainly for business users and the requirements also have an approval process inbuilt. Then defect, again, even though it's technically a task type, has a completely different functional purpose, mainly to do with test execution. You raise defects when you encounter issues during your test execution and you log them into the system. How you work with tasks? First of all, you look at the content that is already provided by SAP Activate methodology. And SAP Activate follows a nice structure, phase, deliverable, and task. That's why the task list comes pre-grouped by deliverables. If you do not like this view, it's very easy to change it. You can go to this grouping information and you can choose a different order. As an example, you, want, you may say, I want to group it by scope or I want to group my tasks by release. It's your choice. You can also use this option to sort your task list easily. There are many attributes which you do not see by default. As an example, unique IDs. You can add this option, click OK, and, and you see now each task is showing with an ID. So this ID is a stable ID, unique for that task, which you can use in your communication or when you are commenting in tasks. Now let's talk about task status. We allow only these status to be used. Open, in progress, block, done, or not relevant. We do not allow this status list to be increased. Why? Because we have some analytic reports which come pre-delivered and pre-configured. And keeping the status list small makes it easy to manage that. If you need custom statuses, let's say you have a status called deprecated, then what we recommend is you use tags for that purpose. You can create your custom tags easily via Excel upload, and that way you can manage your own custom workflow using the tag filters. There is an important attribute called state, which is not that visible by default, but you can enable it using the adapt filters option and use this state automatically filters your task list with the default action active. So what is this state and why it is used? This state is heavily used in content update. What happens is SAP Cloud ALM is kept up to date whenever we get new content from SAP Activate methodology. There are some situations in which SAP Activate may, decided, may decide to completely restructure the task. And in that case, if a task is deprecated, we do not delete it from your system. We just set to a special state called obsolete and we remove that from your task list. And if you are curious, you can enable this attribute you can then search for all the obsolete items and review them. Obsolete items become read-only. They get this special prefix. But the good part is, if you had work that you had performed and you want not to lose it, you can manually set to active. Then the task state is changed from obsolete to active and you can freely work on that task again. You can actually use the same capability even for your own created content. That means you can pick a project task or use a story. And if you think that's no longer valid, but you do not want to delete it, then the better option is use this state obsolete. And when you want to restore it, then push it back to active.
And let's talk about now the Timebox attribute. Timebox is a generic name that is given to a phase, sprint, and sometimes even a milestone. Tasks when assigned to Timebox automatically get the end date of the Timebox as due date. And it is also shown with this link icon. The advantage of that is dynamic scheduling. That means if the phase definition is updated, then all the link tasks are updated automatically. You may have some incidents in which you want a special handling. So let's say assign team members. Maybe you want to do it way earlier than the phase end. And let's say you want it to be done on October 3rd. And you see now the link icon is gone. That indicates that now this task assigned team members is a special one because it's manually set. If the phase definition is updated, then these three tasks will be updated, but this one will not be updated. So let's actually do that and let's maybe change the prepare phase to November 15th. So I'm changing the end date to November 15th. So wherever I had October 31st and the link icon, that date should be automatically changed to November 15th. And wherever it was a manually defined constraint, that date should be preserved. Exactly as expected. So this helps you in mass management as a project lead. That means the ideal situation is you do not change the tasks dates manually, but you play with the time box dates so that your entire schedule is updated dynamically. But in case if there is a special event such as an auditor is coming and you can't really influence that, then you should actually define it as a manual event. Let's talk about teams, in fact, roles and assignments. Projects have teams, teams have roles and roles have people assigned. There is a dedicated blog post that describes the interaction, how this works. That means once you, once you change a team, does the assignee list gets cleared or not? So it's really well described in that blog post. I will link that in the description of this video. Then you can also set some tasks as favorites. That way you can access them easily using a filter option for favorites. Some of the tasks have this icon and this is the link icon. This means this task has a URL and this URL takes you to the system and in fact tenant if the landscape is linked to the project via a deployment plan. This information comes from the backend. That means this URL icon option is available only for the template tasks or the roadmap tasks, which I mentioned, and not if you create a task manually. You also see this special icon for comments. Tasks can have comments that eases collaboration and maintains a nice trail of interaction. Tasks have two main visualization options. One is this list view, but the other one is Gantt chart. And Gantt chart just gives you visual indications and also gives you how the relationships are structured. So as you see, Gantt chart helps you in visualizing how the tasks are stacked against each other and even how they are related. And this view also is a special view because it helps the project lead easily see how the sprint dates are aligned to the release dates and if required, make some adjustments. There is a search that you can use and search finds the text as well as certain key attributes. So if I try to search with a unique ID, so that makes my life much easy. Now let's look at the special view called accelerators. The tasks which come from SAP Activate methodology also have additional assets known as accelerators. And, and these accelerators are some templates, some checklists, which are extremely valuable. So if you're a project lead, you may want to get a condensed view as you are seeing right now, and maybe use a filter option such as which of the accelerators are relevant for me in the prepare phase. 
And that way you can get to the list of accelerators very easily rather than navigating to individual tasks. So this was the list view. We can also go to the details view of a task by clicking on any of the record. And here you see some additional options. You can break a task into smaller units called subtasks very easily. So if I go into the edit mode and I can just type it easily. So subtask A and subtask B. Now note carefully the order. When you create a subtask, there is an empty row that comes at the top of the table but when you save, the tasks automatically get sorted alphabetically. So when I save, I should see actually the reverse order A on the top, B and then C. Then tasks can have references, which are basically links. So if you're using as an example SharePoint, then you can link those easily. Tasks have a lot of additional information, the context in which a task operates. Tasks also have this deliverable information. To access the deliverable, you can click on this URL. And when you do that, then the deliverable information is open for you in the right panel. You can easily collaborate by using the comment capability. And there are some other options. You can copy a task and it's, it's also very important when you want to change the information coming from SAP Activate. So you actually, you may want to convert this into a project task and then edit the text provided. And if you want to set a task to obsolete, you can do this easily. And a very important piece, especially for auditors, is this history trail. So SAP Cloud LM is designed for trust in which a person B can work on a task which is assigned to person A without explicit assignment. But to safeguard, a very detailed history log is maintained. When you get started with SAP Cloud LM, then many things may not be that clear for you. So you can always use this help icon and that opens a lot of hotspots. And you can then use these hotspots to read more about this information for status, how it is used, what are the different values, who can delete, what do I need for deletion. It has to be in two steps. First, you have to set something to obsolete and only then you can delete it. So there are a lot of fine details which are available in your application, making your life easy. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hope it was valuable information. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and stay tuned to the channel. Thanks and have a great day.